צהריים טובים, אני אגיד כמה מילים קצרות ונתחיל. Um, so just a few words before I introduce uh, our guest today, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you all uh, for our events uh, next week. We will have three more international guests next week and three workshops during this week. Uh, on Tuesday we are having here a lecture by uh, Reika Hansen and uh, Barnabas Wetten, both from the Kolding School of Design in Denmark. They will be giving a week-long workshop here for our students uh, in, in the third year. And on Thursday next week, we're having uh, Ruben Abels from Holland, from the Netherlands, that will speak about social design and work in the, the relationship between designers and the community. So this is Tuesday and Thursday next week. As for today, I'm really uh, pleased and honored to uh, introduce to you John McNaught, who is also giving a workshop here during this week with uh, fourth years. And uh, John is an illustrator and printmaker. He lives in Bristol, England, uh, where he works as a printmaking instructor um, at the University of West England. He also produces comic books for the No Bro Press, uh, the world famous No Bro Press. Amongst his books is his book, Dockwood, Uh, which won the Prix Révélation and was a nominee for the Eisner Prize um, in the U.S. His artwork and prints are exhibited worldwide uh, in uh, venues such as uh, Portland, Paris, and London. His illustrations were published in magazines and newspapers, again, worldwide, such as the New York Times, the London Review of Books, uh, and others. So please welcome John McNaught. Thanks very much, Adi. Um, and thanks so much for having me here. It's a real pleasure to be working with students at the Betzalel Academy this week. Um, really excited to be, to be here. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk through a slideshow of um, my, uh, my work, mainly my printmaking and comic books. Um, as it, it kind of feels like kind of one body of work, really, and I'll sort of show how printmaking has led into the comics and how, how the two sit alongside each other. Um, so these are my uh, books I've published with Nobrow Press, who I've been working with uh, since 2010. Um, and then uh, just an example here of my printmaking, um, a, a liner cut print, um, just before I start. So... Um, <laughs> I studied uh, in the University of the West of England and graduated in 2007 um, from an uh, illustration program there. Um, and while I was there, I, 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 I became uh, very interested in printmaking and spent most of my, my time in the print rooms there, mainly because it was a, a very kind of calm, quiet environment to be, and the sort of process of printmaking had a kind of meditative quality that I, I really took to and, and, and the care you kind of put into the, the work kind of really shows through um, in the final piece. Um, and I was very inspired by um, lots of kind of landscape printmaking and landscape art. Um, I've, it, I, I've kind of, you know, grown up in, in England and uh, camping in, in the hills and in Wales and Scotland. And I feel like the kind of English landscape is quite a big, a big part of me, really. And this is a, a print by Eric Revillius, who, 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 who does beautifully captures the kind of damp greys and greens of, of England. Um, and uh, and I, I was very excited by Japanese printmaking when I was studying. And, and I, 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 I went to the printmaking instructors and, and, and asked them, sort of, how do I do these things that they're doing in these these prints, you know, after I saw an exhibition of Hiroshige prints in Amsterdam and um, I became obsessed with trying to kind of recreate these kind of hazy skies. Um, so I got some, the, the instructors kind of really helped me and, and, and showed me kind of techniques and methods and I just really enjoyed that kind of um, trying to kind of create these atmospheres. Um, just a few examples of some comics that I've, I, I've been most inspired by really in, in my lifetime and um, this is Raymond Briggs who's it's a real he's a real kind of uh, national treasure really in England um, uh, this is his comic book The Snowman which is a, 
silent narrative, um, which in the UK has become a kind of um, chocolate box staple. You know, Christmas time, it's, it's kind of on every kind of um, biscuit tin and uh, chocolate box, which is a bit of a shame, but it's a beautifully told story. Um, and he's also done some, some fant fantastic silent storytelling, very atmospheric. Um, and Chris, this, I think this page of Chris Ware's Jimmy Corrigan was a kind of real, just kind of, when I first read this, it was a huge <coughs> moment really for me. Um, this kind of beautifully poetic image of, of a, um, a strand of light floating off into the distance. Um, it, it, uh, kind of the first time I'd really seen this kind of, kind of poetry in, in, in comics, you know, and, and um, so Chris Ware is a huge, um, huge influence on, on me. This is Tom Gould, who's an English cartoonist, um, whose latest book is called Goliath. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a lovely book. Um, he used to, when I was studying, he he was publishing these little uh, booklets, um, little kind of envelopes of of, of um, mini books that he self-published, and very very funny and 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 beautiful kind of his dry sense of humour, um, and and the most kind of, you just had to have them all, you know, when you when you see these things, very delicate little books, um, and this is Kevin Huizenga who, again, with um, Kevin H's comics, uh, this is from Ganges, uh, number one, I think, and it was a very, like, really, for me, seeing someone who's not so much kind of telling a story, you know, telling a story as they're just kind of creating these little poems, you know, he's, his subject matter, he just explores very poetically these moments. This, this page is kind of a couple kind of falling asleep and this kind of the snores kind of drifting out of the room. Um, so th that was really, you know, these kind of comics just really sort of changed the way I looked at things, really. Um, so this is the kind of, this is an image here of um, where I grew up. This is Winchester in, um, this is a view from my back garden. Um, and it's a very kind of boring kind of suburb of, of the city of Winchester with all these kind of identical houses. Um, and shortly after I graduated, I, I spent some time uh, with a job. I moved back to that area. And we'd spend lots of kind of Sundays visiting my family and walking around this this, this part of town, which I was quite <laughs> nostalgic for. And uh, I just started making these these prints, um, screen prints, and uh, you can kind of see they're very inspired, really, by these kind of Japanese printmaking, Hiroshige, kind of these, these the skies, trying to kind of capture something of that kind of haziness. Um, but there was just something about these bungalows I found really in enticing the, the character of these kind of quite squat little houses. Um, and uh, <coughs> at the time, I, I was kind of just just exploring print methods, really. So there's a few of these as a little lino cut and d depicting just trees, just trying to depict different trees that I kind of knew well. Um, and I became kind of obsessed at the time. This was um, with... with uh, uh, with this kind of environment, and and I, 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 the the atmosphere kind of said something to me. I wasn't quite sure what, but I just wanted to continue to kind of try and um, try and communicate that in these images. Um, and as you can see, as I continued with these prints, they began to look more and more like comics, um, and they were mainly screen prints and lithographs. This one here was a is a three color lithograph that I printed, um, and. Uh, they became kind of experiments, really, in just trying to sort of <coughs> capture the sort of the, the mood, like a, the, the mood of a moment, you know. This one in particular, I think, was quite an interesting one for me. Um, a very, very early thing I did. Um, and I just had the idea of, I wanted to combine an episode of the TV show Friends uh, with the sun setting, because we used to have, Friends used to play at 6 o'clock on Channel 4 in England every day. So we'd always end up watching Friends as a sunset. And it was, for me, that became a very kind of quite loaded kind of nostalgic memory. So I decided to, so this, is, this page is just showing that with the, the, with the color blend going down the page as the sun sets. And this kind of little bit of banter between uh, uh, Joey and Phoebe and, uh, and Chandler, and ending on a little kind of quip from, from uh, Chandler, I think. Um, and I, I, I just kind of, doing this I really started to really enjoy structuring the page almost like a poem just sort of using the sort of you can see there the three panels on the right three on the left and I just became fascinated with this I really in I did something before I started to try and make these grids I hadn't really noticed how much there was to constructing a comic page um, 
And I, I kind of liked how they started to work. They weren't really stories, they're just little kind of little moments. Um, and here we have just the sounds in the neighborhood. So it's the same thing, this kind of very quiet, sleepy neighborhood and the different sounds of the different birds and the cars going by and things. Um, and then continuing the same thing. Um, I was always, when I was studying and things, I, I loved comics, but I kind of didn't really feel like I could come up with stories. I always felt a bit embarrassed kind of making up things, you know? <laughs> And, and it was quite interesting to get to a point where I just started to just experiment and think maybe I don't need a story, maybe I don't need to make up things, I can just kind of try and show something that's, that's, that's interesting to me. And I made this collection of these, just these little short comics really about these two boys sitting on a roof and watching the world go by. So it's just a, a, a way of just showing little moments from this, this kind of environment that I, I, I was interested in. Um, and uh, this was something, at this point in time, I was working in a print centre, um, among other jobs, and I, um, I, I decided to kind of, you know, I was trying to print these, and I decided to make a book of my own. Um, I, I, you know, I'd made little mini artist books before, but I wanted to compile these comics into a publication um, as a study of this little community. Um, and I did these lithographically, I don't know if, um, how many of you are interested in printmaking here, but I've just got a, kind of a, a few slides to show the process. Um, so using an offset lithographic press, I first of all painted the layer which will be printed in pink, and then there's a layer in blue, and then a layer in black, and then they all got printed, overlaid on top of each other as spot colours um, to become a, a page. This is actually a, a page from the, the final book which is commercially printed, but the, to begin with, I printed it myself um, in a booklet. Um, and this, a couple of years after that, actually, it, it, I kind of came across Neighbrow Press, and, and they, they, they became interested in, in this aesthetic. They, they, um, Sam and Alex, who are directors at Neighbrow, are real kind of um, enthusiasts for, for publication and printing, and, and, and they love this kind of spot colour offset life though is aesthetic so when they saw on my blog these kind of these pages which were printed in this way they thought you know this is kind of what we want to be experimenting with as well so so we ended up doing i put together i expanded it after lots of chats with them we expanded the book into a tiny little kind of um a comic book and uh, this was really exciting for me because i i i really hadn't dreamed of really getting these things published um and I, I based the size on a ladybird book. Um, I don't know if you know the format here, but it's something that we have in, in England. It's quite a kind of a classic sort of English um, children's uh, books, and they're beautifully designed. Um, and and everyone's grandma's house is full of ladybird books. You know, so there's a sort of nostalgic quality to these things, and just the size and shape and the, the feel of them in your hand. So I like the idea of trying to kind of give it the feel of a ladybird book to kind of, so physically it sort of felt, uh, it felt like um, it kind of had that sort of nostalgic <coughs> quality. Um, and when Sam and Alex suggested printing in hardback, I was, I was thrilled, it was really exciting. Um, and shortly after that, actually, I ended up doing another book called Pebble Island. Um, it's a bit of a muddle in this slideshow because I was actually working on this years before I printed, um, we printed it um, with Nobrow, but um, it was a, a series of, of, of projects I was just working on in my own time, really. I just became really interested in drawing and painting from these old photos. Um, and these are images of myself and my brothers. Um, when we were kids, we, we lived in... Um, in the Falkland Islands, just, just for a short period while my dad was teaching over there. Um, so we've got these wonderful photos of this kind of quite a bleak landscape, really quite st strange, kind of uh, completely treeless, kind of, but, but very kind of damp kind of environments. Um, and us all in our little parkas and hats trudging around. Um, so I started doing some little comic books. And um, this is, again, this is a, lo a long time before I had anything published with Nobrow. Um, exploring just seeing this as a starting point. I didn't really kind of know what I was doing with this, but I liked the idea of just following these these children, just trudging along through these environments. Um, and also printmaking as well. I, I used this as a subject for 
um, for printmaking. So this is a screen print of... Um, this is actually based on a, um, a place we used to go when, when we were kids, where there were all these kind of broken down Land Rovers. And uh, we'd cycle off, me and my brothers, and, and climb on these things and kind of, you know, it was a kind of, we had free reign, it was kind of like our den. Um, and so I made this image based on that, but it was interesting how the image seemed to hold more than just that memory. You know, when I looked at the image, it kind of, it, I felt like there was more of a story there, not necessarily the real story that was about us. It kind of, it, it kind of, it made me want to kind of continue to explore that. So um, I started to make this kind of silent comic strip, kind of inspired a lot I in its in its form uh, by by Raymond Briggs, who, d who did the Snowman. This, uh, the idea of this kind of silent, gradual story unfolding, um, based around this kind of desolate sort of. Uh, area of, of wasteland with these we've, with these kind of broken down vehicles, um, and again, just for any kind of print nerds, here's some uh, the separation for this one. So again, it was done in that kind of spot color process. Um, so we got the pink here, a much colder pink for this book actually, because I wanted it to have a ha have a different kind of quality, and then the blue layered on top, and then the the black on top of that, giving this kind of um, this I just went kind of crazy with cross hatching in this book. I look back on it now and think, "Wow, what was I, <laughs> what was I thinking?" Um, but I, I really enjoyed just this kind of like just filling all these pages with with pattern. Um, and uh, so this kind of uh, is a little, a very very slight little story, and and really just based on a feeling, this kind of sense of kind of walking around these environments and kind of discovering um, these places. Um, uh, I'm just showing briefly a few a few slides of this this um, this comic I did. This was for a, a, a no bra anthology, um, partly because uh, the poster for this talk has got an image from here on, and also um, it's quite a fun few slides to show. Um, the no bra uh, set out this brief for an anthology called the a Graphic Cosmogony. And this is when, when they were, it was early days for Nobra, actually. This was one of the first anthologies they did. And, um, and they had this lovely idea, which was to tell, to get artists from, from uh, you know, a, a quite a widespread of artists to, um, to depict in eight pages um, the beginning of the world, you know. And that was, as, it could be anything, any sort of um, different interpretation of that. Um, and I had this idea. Um, I I became quite. I was quite interested in in, in fres <coughs> fresco paintings. Um, and I, 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 the first thing that came to mind was these kind of um, these these fresco paintings. And part of the reason for my interest is I, I ended up f quite a few years when I was in my early twenties. I, I I ended up uh, going on a trip with my nan um, to to Italy to. Um, she she got she wanted to go on this kind of old person's package tour, <laughs> and uh, she she wanted a companion. She didn't want to go on her own, so um, she invited me along, and uh, and I, I had nothing else to do, and <laughs> so I thought I'd go. And she's great, so it was really good fun. Um, and we ended up going to Austria as well the year after. Um, and she's 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 an amazing lady, um, and. Uh, and it was amazing because I saw some of the most beautiful artwork I've, I've ever seen, really. But it was from the context of this kind of babbling, kind of bickering group of kind of grumpy British tourists, you know? Um, and, and in every environment, we all had these little uh, headphones on, you know, telling us it's sort of audio tours. And it was this kind of mix of the uh, seeing uh, Giotto's uh, frescoes in Assisi, you know, incredible, beautiful artwork, and <laughs> and this kind of um, my companions for the trip, um, and uh, I became really fascinated by this. It was really, it was just really good fun, really, uh, really good, and lots of little sketches while I was there and things. And I started to do this comic, which can kind of combined this kind of creation story told out through the kind of panels of the wall. You know, I, I, I kind of almost like going into Giotto's frescoes did feel like walking into just a gigantic, beautiful comic strip. Um, and then at the same time, we've got these small stories of, of, of the characters kind of eating wine gums 
um, from their handbags and reading their little books as they go around. Um, okay, so this is a, my view of um, Rome. <laughs> we only had a day in Rome, so this is pretty much what I saw of Rome. Um, I, this is a print kind of based on that that experience. I'd love to develop this this more. I kind of really en enjoyed making this comic strip. Um, anyway, so th 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 during the time I was making all of those books, really, I I, I um. I was working here, this is my corner of a kitchen where I was making sandwiches. There's no money in making comics about, uh, <laughs> about uh, Italian frescoes, unfortunately. <laughs> so I was um, making sandwiches every day. Uh, and I, this, this was the view out my window um, in the, in, in the um, it, it was a cafe called Spike Island. And, um, and I just kind of stare at this, it was a beautiful, it was right by a river. So we had this lovely sky and these London plane trees. Um, kind of hanging over the the pathway, and um, and I just got obsessed with these kind of reflections, you know, and, and the way the strip lighting, this kind of ugly kitchen strip lighting, kind of just drifted out across the um, the river. Um, so I started to do some lithographs. It was uh, kind of experimenting again with this, you know, uh, working um, part time as a printmaking instructor. I was kind of always wanting to experiment with the inks and things and. Um, I just really liked this kind of this this these kind of ghostly uh, looming sort of uh, reflections, and I think sometimes with making art or making drawings, you know, once you start to make a piece of work about something, you start to see it more and more. You know, you start to become more open to these things. So I started to just kind of really notice these kind of reflections. This was a, another version I did um, for a cover for the London Review of Books. Um, so a kind of a, a slightly more stylized, bolder version of the same idea. Um, and so here we have, uh, this is the view out a train window. Um, this is the end of a, a comic strip I did for Art Review magazine. And it kind of ended on these, as we went into nighttime, all the reflections from, from things on tables and all these kind of bottles and cups and things were just kind of looming across the, 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 the nighttime landscape and ending on this uh, family guy being watched on a laptop and the viewers kind of fallen asleep, um, just leaving there. So um, it kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting how kind of making the images can sort of really make you see things differently. Um, and then this is, this is what the ground looks like uh, for a good six months of the year <laughs> in, um, in Bristol where I live. Um, so uh, walking around with the kind of puddles on the, on the ground, it kind of made me kind of, when I try and kind of, I just started, there's something about, I think there was a strip by Frank King, one of his Gasoline Alley strips, where his characters are lying at the, the edge of a, a pond, looking down at the reflections, and then one of them dives in and starts to fly around this kind of upside down world. And just walking around, you can start to see glimpses, and it's lovely to suddenly think about this kind of upside down world under, the, um, under our own. So I started this series of prints based on that, which, uh, which I really enjoyed making. Um, and again, for, for print nerds, we've got two color, this is a lithograph, so an offset lithograph print, um, two colors of gray printed down, and then, uh, and then using a kind of color blend on a roller, um, I kind of inked up the, the puddle to create this kind of, this kind of uh, glossy sheen. Um, and actually, while I was printing these these prints, um, one of the uh, the only time I can really print um, myself without any students from the university around um, I, is uh, is kind of very early in the morning. So I have to get up very early and walk into to my my work, um, maybe kind of it's around so half six seven. Try and get there for seven. Um, and so I started to see the the city at this kind of twilight time, just from from actually having to get up to, to go to work. And, um, and there's something so beautiful about that time of day. And this is a, a bus shelter, um, uh, kind of glowing in this kind of twilight. Um, I, qu I quite like it when there's no people around and the only, but there's all these just looming faces from billboards and bus shelters. It's quite an interesting time of day. Um, and I became really interested kind of in that environment. And, and, and the next bit of work really was inspired by all that, that printmaking. I, I kind of wanted to compile all that into a, into a book, um, which became this book, Dockwood. And this is the first book, really, that I actually I made knowing that it would be published. So No Brow, I'd done the first two books for No Brow by this point, and, and they asked me to do this one. Um, 
so it was a much more kind of um, yeah I was kind of going into it it was a bit more nerve wracking um, but I, I, I just wanted to capture something of this kind of this environment these kind of again this kind of suburbs but a bit more based on on where I live now in Bristol um, so these kind of uh, this kind of trudging these kind of wet um, pavements and the kind of looming orange street lamps and things um, so uh, and the uh, buses flying by so this early morning um, sorry early morning in the um, uh, y when those kind of streets are very empty you just get the buses of commuters going to work um, and I kind of love these these kind of they've always got movie posters always kind of always people holding guns like this always stretching out so you just have these kind of ridiculous action-packed scenes just drifting by and then all the tired commu commuters on the bus um, and that's kind of there were all these little images I just kind of thought that I wanted to sort of make the story about you know it was more about a feeling than than, than a kind of than a particular story um, so I decided to sort of start from the context of, of of a job that idea of you know going to work in the morning and and just kind of use the structure of a day to kind of to be my sort of comic structure you know um, so this this story was really based on um, on a job I used to have in a, in a home for the elderly when I was when I was younger and uh, and the start of every day I'd just go in and the first thing to do would be to peel all the potatoes um, and it would st maybe still be kind of seven o'clock in the morning and the sun's kind of coming up and and you'd listen to the radio and and there was some I just kind of I like the idea. I hadn't seen, you know. I, I like the idea of kind of trying to kind of put something of this down on the page and really try and capture it. You can kind of see here that I, I, um, most of the ideas do come straight from <laughs> from my environment. Um, and the other thing that I found really fascinating, the really thing that I stuck me on this idea of the home for the elderly, was um, the kind of the the kind of. Uh, there's a huge um, variation in, in kind of feelings and things in this place, you know. And every every room would 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 be filled with kind of first of all artifacts from this person's life, you know. There's kind of uh, things on shelves, things that are important to to, to whoever's room um, this is. Um, and there'd be photographs on the wall, kind of like sometimes phrases or proverbs and things like this but also the TV the kind of daytime TV on in the corner and there'd be the kind of the the, the TV magazines the kind of gossip magazines and this lovely sort of just m muddle of, of, of beautiful things kind of quite obnoxious things quite kind of sad things quite funny things you know um, and I, I didn't really know why I found this this interesting but I kind of so I felt like I'd just try and present it and see if it it, it worked. There's something about putting two images next to each other sometimes just kind of sparks some kind of feeling or um, uh, emotion. So um, I, I it really enjoyed creating these kind of checkerboards of, of, of all these different kind of, of things and, and just to see if the reader would kind of get something of the same feeling from them. Um, this here, this is actually, this, the, the, there was a line in the corridors of this old people's home that I worked in where all these... Um, Reproductions of of uh, kind of uh, dramatic uh, European um, romantic landscapes and things. You know these kind of Caspar David Friedrich, um, these kind of maybe Constable as well. You know these kind of beautiful, you know quite epic landscapes. And uh, particularly this, uh, I remember this this one, the kind of two figures, um, Caspar David Friedrich landscape. And th they'd always be kind of these small figures, just overwhelmed by these kind of vast environments. And I kind of, um, I kind of enjoyed. Um, oh, here, here it is. So um, uh, I kind of wanted to to play on that a little bit, and kind of almost y because I, 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 the book became about the season of autumn as well, and 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 I, I wanted to almost kind of try and uh, play on that idea of being sort of tiny in this this huge kind of the, the change in season, this huge environment. Um, so, uh, so I kind of kept going back to this motif of these kind of small figures dwarfed by, by their surroundings. Um, I've just got some slides here about kind of uh, how it was drawn and made. Um, so it was all done. It was slightly more. I mean, 
I still use the same spot color kind of printing that I did with the other books. Um, <coughs> but um, I'd had a few years to kind of develop and, 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 and um, learn a few more tricks. Um, with planning the story, I just, um, because I tend to, um, these things develop very slowly, I just had a couple of years worth of scribbly notes in notebooks about, you know, things that sort of had the right kind of feel, you know. And, um, and you can see how some of these, these have became panels in, in, in the book, in these slides here. Um, and also, uh, lots of um, taking notes on my phone um, as I walk around. I, I enjoyed, I like these kind of little incidental compositions of things in, in, the, in the city. Um, and I wanted the book to be quite grounded in, in this kind of, um, in, in the kind of contemporary kind of world in, in, a, in a way. Um, so uh, this is just some examples of one of many, many iPhone lists I did as I walked. Um, and then just gradual developments of pages. Um, I planned the page on the left-hand side there. You can see the, um, uh, a, um, just a note card with some sentences on. And I, I planned the whole book with just sentence by sentence, really, to begin with, just kind of a, an idea of what happened on each page. Um, and I had a... Um, kind of very ugly bit of corporate stationery kind of housing all my note cards. Um, and then gradually as it went on, I, I started to sketch in the, the thumbnails um, and then drawing the, the, the final sketches, um, which um, you can kind of see there, it's, it's all, there's a lot of kind of collage there where I've kind of traced, drawn panels and traced them and, and cut and paste stuck. I do a lot of rearranging as well because a lot of these pages um, it's not so much just a kind of narrative, it's kind of a mood piece really, so it's kind of trying to get lots of different imagery sat alongside each other. So I can kind of, I, I kind of cut out all these squares and jostle them around until it kind of feels right a lot of the time, um, but then have this kind of, try and have the narrative running through the page as well. Um, and then it was inked, I, I, I did the whole book um, using, each page I did two layers of, of um, film with this, um, this black uh, ink and a brush. Um, so in the same way that I did the other books as well, I did then, in Photoshop, use some, some kind of highlight some areas and things and add a bit more colour, <coughs> so eventually the book had more than two colours in, but um, it was all taken from these two tonal layers, so the kind of the key line black and then the, the sort of colour behind. Um, so that's the final page, and you can you can see there's some blue in there, there's some some red in there, using the different Pantone colours. But um, I try and kind of just use the the uh, brush marks and the the ink to kind of create all the the artwork. Um, this <laughs> the I just wanted to say a few words about this another section of the book, um, which is based in this. Uh, alien landscape. It's kind of things that I, th that I think maybe you wouldn't get from reading the book. So I, I figured I, I, I'd just talk about kind of this, my sort of personal ideas behind, behind these pages a little bit. Um, it's, it's a boy basically at the end of his day and he's playing on his, um, on his video game. Um, so it's suddenly a big explosion of kind of violence at the end of this book. Um, but also a kind of, uh, once he's killed all the the kind of alien soldiers. He he kind of has a moment of reflection um, on this on this this mountain, and um, uh, this was kind of based upon uh, w as a kid. Me and my brothers used to play this game Quake Quake Two. I think this is, um, and we 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 um, and uh, and we used to always play this together. It's quite a kind of fond memory for me, really. And uh, but I've got this memory of my my older brother getting a um, a disc with lots of kind of. <coughs> levels like maps that you could play multiplayer um, online games with um, but we didn't have the internet so we downloaded all these maps and then we all kind of excitedly loaded them up and then we just kind of walked around <laughs> and just kind of took in the environments and and kind of just looked at them it was kind of a, a, a quite a, a, a kind of a, a pathetic thing to do but we had <laughs> spent these evenings just kind of walking around these empty maps and uh, and there's something about that. I kind of almost that's that's filed away in my memory as this kind of almost in the same place as kind of kind of lonely walks in in fields, you know, and this kind of uh, coming of age experience. Um, so I kind of wanted um, the kind of moment of reflection in the, in the in the book to kind of be in this kind of in this kind of uh, 
video game landscape. Again, it's that kind of mixing this kind of uh, this kind of um, the the kind of the the very ugly things and the beautiful things. I, I think there's something in that that I, I'm I'm very interested in. Uh, you can see here the kind of um, uh, I've got a little brother who who was 13 when when I was writing this. Um, he's a bit older now, but um, <laughs> this is kind of you can see I ca I can't make anything up. Everything just kind of comes from <laughs> from reality in some way. Um, and there's something I always found very kind of moving about sitting and playing video games with him. Uh, this sort of combination of this kind of uh, childhood detritus on the floor and the kind of the, the, the kind of parched landscape of the game. Um, so somehow it seemed, it moved me and I didn't quite know why so I thought I'd just kind of compile these things into a comic. Um, a few slides of something I'm working on now. This is, this is um, uh, a, a book I'm hoping to do. I'm not sure when it will be done, but um, a, based upon a, a small island. And I visited the Scilly Isles just off of the coast of Cornwall um, in England. And I spent a week just walking around on my own. I camped there and walked around on my own just writing and trying to sort of take in the atmosphere of the place. Lots of, I, I got really fascinated by these rocks, these kind of standing stones and this kind of mysterious kind of moss-covered rocks, you know, this kind of ancient kind of mystery of these things. Um, and started doing some printmaking. A lot of the time I feel like the printmaking is really a way into stories, you know, because you, you make a print and then you can start to sort of feel a story coming out of that, that print, you know, so these kind of bleached, kind of desolate sort of beaches and things. Um, uh, so that, hopefully, that's what I'm kind of working on now, but I, I'm still at that kind of exploration stage and kind of really kind of trying to get a story together. Um, and this is a slide of, this is a new no-brow anthology, which um, I, I did the cover for. Um, it's about silence. I think that's just come out now, but it's just a, that's kind of the most recent thing, really, I've, I've done. So these are some garden ornaments looking at the moon. Um, I just, if there's time, I've got, is there time? Is it Okay. I've just got a few slides just to show. Um, so that was all very my very kind of indulgent um, uh <laughs> personal work. Um, and <laughs> I, I'll just show a few slides of, of some commercial work. I mean, I, I, I work um, in, in, in kind of education um, part-time, so I kind of um, I, I make a living a lot of the time from, from, from print being a printmaking technician. Um, but I do as well need to do some commercial illustration work to kind of to to kind of stay um, stay fed and in a house. Um, and but it's been you know I've had some I've been had some really nice jobs and I've just to show a few of those. Um, this is a book I that I finished recently. Um, I've quite enjoyed doing black and white work actually. It's kind of taking this kind of some of the things I've learned from printmaking and from doing these comic books. Um, uh, making quite kind of these little motifs. Um, this, these are some chapter heads from a book about uh, craftspeople in, in, in the Hudson, along the Hudson River. Um, I did some nature illustration as well. Um, I did this kind of before I did Dockwood. I, I did a series of these black and white chapter heads for a book about, um, about uh, essays on nature on the British countryside. Um, which is kind of w where the idea from Dockwood came from, because I was doing these kind of very <laughs> beautiful sort of um, idyllic English um, uh, countryside images and looking at a lot of traditional English um, illustration. So Dockwood was really a kind of way of trying to sort of take that visual language and apply it to kind of the kind of mundane contemporary urban life, you know. So, um, but, so that was very interesting for me. Um, I've done this just a couple of covers I did for the London Review of Books. It's, it's, it's so much fun, a, a, a real pleasure working for them because they, um, they just ask me to, to make, uh, to, to pitch covers I, and they can be about anything at all. And, and I guess they're about England, about the kind of um, season often. The one on the right there is actually the view from, the, I've got a tiny little studio that I rent um, and it looks out across this very ugly kind of office kind of stretch of offices but you always see these little um well they're not little they're normal size but from where i am they're little um uh builders on the roof um working on things in their kind of luminous um tabards um so i got, I, I enjoyed that i actually got an email last week from a, a a roofer um saying he'd seen this and it reminded him of this you know and, and how he he always watches the world go by from the roof so it was quite nice that 
I, I got that. Um, and a bit of book design as well. I haven't done loads of book design, but um, uh, this book was an absolute joy to do. I, 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 I loved um, doing this. It's a, a, a wonderful Australian young adult writer. Um, and uh, um, I, I did the, um, the cover and some illustrations inside, black and white. Um, that was, yeah, a, a lovely job. Really, really nice. And some uh, just... I'm not so proud of these. These are just um, uh, kind of editorial illustrations. This is for a food magazine. Um, a couple of little spots uh, for the New York Times. Um, it's, it's, it, doing this kind of work, is, it's amazing how different it is from doing the rest of my work because um, I'm someone I like to sort of really take things slowly and, and spend a few weeks kind of going back to things after a time, but uh, this is kind of, uh, we need this by the end of the day kind of situations. Um, but it's been, it's really good practice and it's, it's I really do enjoy um, working for them. And there's just a program guide um, for small, uh, SPX in, in, in Washington, uh, which I did last year, um, which, which was quite fun. I tried to, uh, it was a bit of a, um, a play on a sort of design by Eric Revilius that I, I liked, and I kind of played around with that, trying to depict the comic festival. I, I did make the comic festival look very depressing. I think from the top image, it's just really empty and bleak. Um, but that, uh, that's my last slide. So that's kind of um, that's 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 everything there. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I guess that's. I don't know if there's any um, questions or anything. If anyone wants to ask anything. Um, I think uh, th there is. I, I, I haven't really. Um, I don't think I've really collaborated much. I've always kind of talked about it and have never really done it. It's the sort of thing you sort of go, oh, yeah, like maybe after some drinks, we're, we're going to do this thing together and it's going to be amazing. But um, I do this. I've got some very good friends in Nobrow and, and, and um, it's been great for me. I think working with Nobrow, it's, I've. I've been to quite a lot of um, festivals with them and kind of represented them at various things or, or, or helped, you know, sitting on the stool for them at, at festivals. Um, so y I've, I've ended up meeting a lot of, of, of other no-brow artists. So, for example, kind of, um, you know, Luke Pearson and Philippa Rice and there's some really, uh, really, really <coughs> great people. So I've, um, there is a... Um, there's a I, I live kind of slightly detached from... Because I'm not in London... Um, but I, you know, th so it's not really a kind of community as such. But I guess it is a wider community. We, you know, we, we're there. We're, there's a lot of kind of support and stuff, and, and that kind of energy you take from other people doing exciting things. I just got Luke's new uh, Hilda book, which, um, uh, yeah, it's just so exciting when a new book comes into Nobrow and I sort of get a copy, and you know, uh, it makes you kind of every time you see a new book, you want to kind of start making a new one yourself, and you know. Um, Okay. <laughs> thank, thanks very much. Thank you.